Welcome back, I am Templar, and today for this video of, well, pretty much, pretty much, you know, a lot of y'all have already read in the description area. In truth, this is, did medieval people wear swords on the back? Well, in truth, this is both a yes and a no to that answer, in which, of which many of you might not understand this, but in truth, yes, swords were somewhat worn on the back, however, they were not exactly used, like, well, what we depict in history. How so? Well, in truth, uh, let's actually first take a look at, say, fantasy or animated films or even the movie Braveheart. Now, in truth, there are a equivalent of a bunch of people that don't realize this, but there are a lot of people that uh, did technically wear swords on the back. In fact, but this was in the late medieval period. Now, the reason I'm making this video is because of Shad and Scholarly Gladiatoria. So in doing so, I decided, well, might as well actually talk about this also myself. And in doing so, uh, in truth, we kind of would see in historical finds that people did somewhat wear on the back. But not for warfare period. For example, let's take a look at Guts from Berserk, who actually is one of the most famous sword carriers on the back, and if we take a look at his sword carrying device, for example, this is the 90s version compared to the later movie versions of the 2000s, of which, yes, there's a huge difference between the two. One is technically more story, and the other one is more of combat. So, yeah, anyways. Down that besides, uh, if you take a look at the sword, a uh, scabbard itself, it's technically attached with what we would call a uh, well, I want to say a double design. So in doing so, he probably could remove it, probably not. My biggest thought is not until they remade it in the movie versions, which is a lot more better at making the design, of which they did do a little better design of how he was able to carry it. Especially because it has, uh, well, a bar handle, of which that's the only way I could explain it. Now, I actually tried finding a uh, picture of it, but sadly, no. Now, in doing so, this could actually render him uh, obsolete on the battlefield, mainly because of fighting. In fact, if he is supposed to draw it especially quickly, especially if someone was to attack him. Now, in truth, I do not technically see that probably working. But now, let's actually first take a look at, say, another one of the William Wallace. Uh, now, in truth, Braveheart is not very historically accurate, but... The way that Mill Gibson had his back scabbard was technically a little accurate. In fact, Mill Gibson even stated the following, that the back scabbard that he was given was not uh, workable. In fact, he had to change it out in mid-movie scenes, which is kind of uh, hilarious that we don't see that. In truth, you can actually barely see of how he is, well, to use his back scabbard. In fact, you only see it on the battlefields. Which is kind of hilarious. In fact, I mainly saw it somewhere in Falkirk, but I want to say probably at the Battle of Stirling. In the movie. Anyways, uh... But in truth, if we take a look at it, it's extremely different compared to that of how it would have been used. And in doing so, he actually did find a way to actually mainly remove the sword a lot quickly. In other words, it, if he was to keep his original design, he would have to draw a huge claymore from his back, yeah, not workable, so, in truth, he then designed, they had to design a new one, that would, which it would just slide out, which is really cool. In fact, uh, Shad from Shadiverse, he had created his own video on it, which I will leave a link down below for y'all, if any of y'all are interested in Shadiverse or Scottatorio's videos, of which I like them as much, so hopefully y'all can like it as well. Now, Let's actually also talk about something else. Let's talk about, say, well, what about these other type of back scabbards? Well, this, no, I do not see this working. For one, this looks like it's really meant for combat use, meaning it's just qua type crap. So in other words, fantasy bullshit that doesn't work. <sighs> Now, here's the thing, I probably, I probably can actually see a katana somewhat working, maybe, due to the fact of its curved design. 
especially with this image of a Japanese samurai warrior who actually does actually have the samurai sword on his back. Now this is though a different type of katana or samurai sword I should put out there. In, in doing so, these swords, as we can tell from this design look, looks as though that the scabbard part itself that's holding, or the baldric itself that is holding it, is somewhat actually uh, removable. In other words, he could probably just draw the sword, and what could happen, it could probably fall off. Meaning, the scabbard could just fall off, and he could just go full frenzy. But now, this actually does have a big problem here. One is the precise location and design meaning for it. Two is how the hell you're going to use it. Now, in truth, though, I can pretty much hear you already. But, Timbar, aren't there a lot of uh, games and such that make their own version? Well, yeah, in fact, Link... Uh, Backsword actually is a good example because this one actually has been redone which I hear that future Link m video games or uh, type of video games that cover him are gonna have it a little more like this which if you think about it it looks a little more badass because this is the same design that Shad Shad Diversity has so it's kind of awesome now let's also take a look at say the, well, what about other useful type of scabbards? What are they? Well, there are a lot, yes. Well, in truth, there I think the most accurate to workable, workability and functionality uh, most would be this. Now this is a back sword and such, or a baldric, back baldric, whatever you want to pronounce it as. In truth, it has been made in a type of form. Now this type of design is a lot different compared to sheds. So yeah. Now how so? Well if you can take a look at it, this back design, it has a hook. This hook actually holds the cross guard. And as well, the back part is just a small part of a little less of a scabbard. Now I could probably see this working for combat, but I do not probably see it working for, well, keeping the sword safe. Now, in truth, they could probably do what the Gallo Glass did, is actually cover the sword with a woolen uh, blanket across this, in which then it could probably work. So, technically, this can probably work, I want to say. Now, though, let's also take a look at another fine example of history itself. Now, in truth, where do we get the idealism of the back baldric, or the back scabbard, as people would call it? Well, that would be many designs, in which I even seen this design from Sh uh, Mordor, Shadow of War, or Lord of the Rings, Shadow of War, I can't remember the game. But yeah, it does have a good design to it, but in truth, uh, here's the thing. By the late medieval period, that's when we start to see the back baldric. However, it was technically not exactly used that much by a lot of people. In fact, it's actually stated the back baldric was mostly used by mercenaries. Why mercenaries? Kind of obvious. Mercenaries like the Lanschkenet or the Gallo Glass were one of the most famous type of warriors. Now, in truth, the Lanschkenet actually carried their swords on their shoulders. But say, for example, you're a warrior and you're marching from, say, Aachen to Berlin. And in doing so, they're this mercenary band, and here's the thing, you need to carry this sword from this region to that region in a split amount of time. So, could this work? Uh, 50-50. Carrying on the shoulder, yes, I could see that working. Problem is, uh, I would probably like to carry it on my back a little more, especially since I probably have to carry a lot more weapons. I gotta carry a side sword, I gotta carry a halberd or something. So, yeah, you can see my point. Now, in fact, the Gallo Glass did do this. In fact, take a look at this image here of a Gallo Glass warrior. He has an axe, an army sword, and a great sword on his back. Now, this is actually a good example because this is how a Gallo Glass would have actually marched. They would have marched, said, from Dublin to uh, Dunkirk. I want to say maybe Belfast, give or take. So, yeah. But in truth, uh, if we can see this, this Galgas warrior is going to have to be marching. And in doing so, here's the thing. You're going to have to march from one region to another, and in the process, well, you're going to have to do that all that. Or as well, from Edinburgh to Stirling. And in doing so, your arm's going to get very tired. So what do you do? Well, you put a back scabbard. 
Now, in doing so, though, these back scabbards were not exactly meant for, say, combat ready. What do I mean by that? Well, in truth, the entire scabbard was attached to it, attached with a said rope or scarf attachment that was attached to along the back line. And in doing so, this was, I want to say, operational. Problem is, it is not operational. Why? Kind of obvious. Uh, if I was to actually use this a lot, uh, I could probably see a back bolter working somewhat. Uh, in other forms, uh, probably not. Now, in doing so, I do advise many of you all to understand this a little more, because even I'm a little confused at this, because I want to say 50-50, it's a good operational, because the Japanese certainly did it, but technically that's the late Imperial Age. And in doing so, the idealism of the shield is non-existent with the Japanese samurai, due to the fact their shields were a lot different in comparison to the European design. And as well, European warriors actually use different types of armor and such. So in doing so, without the shield, we could probably see, yes, a baldric on the back. Problem is, if they keep the shield, probably not. In doing so, yes, William Wallace probably might have used a great sword, but I do not probably see him using uh, a back baldric. He probably just used it on his side for the great sword, which in truth, in Heighten, uh, we really need to actually fix the Mel Gibson film a little bit more accurately. What? I'm just stating the obvious. Now, in truth, though, I want to actually explain to y'all that we have to understand that the back baldric can work if in the right conditions. Such as if it's an open field of battle, or if it's not inside, say, a urbanized area. Now, in truth, I could probably see it working inside a city f combat, but I do not see it probably being used in house-to-house -house fighting. In other words, he invades a home and tries to kill somebody. So, yeah, just try pulling it out, and in the process, you hit the ceiling, and it gets stuck. Next thing you know, someone attacks you. So, the back baldric, not perfect for urbanized combat warfare, but perfect for, well, rural combat. Now, I do somewhat actually see a problem with the backsword in general, and that would technically be the design manufacturing. Now in truth though, the Claymore, for example, was carried on the back sometimes by Scots and Irish warriors, however, the way they did it is that they actually had what they call a cover attachment. A cover attachment, I know you all understand, is part of the scabbard. How so? Well, it's kind of like the Wallace sword, for example, of which, you see that brown line? That actually gives us a good example. This actually is used to, say, be a part of the said scabbard. In doing so, you just click it off, and it's easily able to be used. Problem is, not that many people realize it, and there are many uh, films and video games out there that, yeah, oh man, I probably don't see that working. Now, don't get me wrong, I do like the look, but I do not like how it's probably being used. So. If any of you are in a fantasy and such, please make it a little more accurate to actually how it could probably be used. Because you also got to put yourself in the shoes of a warrior. Because I wanted to put this for a fantasy film for Friday, but no, I thought to myself there were historical people that did use these. So yeah, in truth, you got to look at the cow glass and you got to look at the shenanigans in it. In truth, though, I would probably look my a little bit more to the gallo glass since they did carry on the back a lot more. But they did not use it on the warfare variation due to the fact of them they're traveling. And doing so, that could explain a lot. But anyways guys, hopefully you like this. If you all want me to talk about anything down below uh, of future references, let me know down in the comments below. I'll be happy to talk about it immediately. And hopefully we can actually view well more videos. In fact, I am planning on doing some other forms of history videos. So, hopefully y'all can stay tuned. Anyways guys, this has been Templar. Like and subscribe. Also click that bell button for notifications. Also check out our Facebook, so that way you know, know of which type of video is going to come up next. Anyways guys, this has been Templar. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.